Valve's creative choices in the Half-Life franchise are hysterical. Absolutely incredible retcon, masterfully executed. They designed this intensely middle-aged looking doctorate holding forehead wrinkled physicist protagonist and then at some point decide no, actually he just got kicked off his parents' medical insurance and yet they outright refuse to physically de-age the model or even erase his prominent forehead wrinkle. They look us dead in the eye while holding this sleepless and ragged high school trigonometry teacher gently in their hands like a baby bird and say, it's 27. <laughs> THEN! In the dead air between game 1 and game 2, they condense all their identical-faced, random, non-critical NPC scientists into beloved, tenderly designed, well-written, fan-favorite individuals and just… they just pretend like they were always like that, like, oh, hey, come on, you guys remember the Vance family, right? And we… we fucking… we, we just fucking nodded our heads and clapped like monkeys with our mouths full of pop rocks and shrieked, oh yes, oh, Eli, my love, so glad to see you again, how is your lovely wife Asian, whom I definitely remember, oh, Alex has grown up so much, I'm so proud of her, a pet head crab, you say, <laughs> oh my god, that's so totally on brand, a classic Dr. Easy, so true to the character, I just love him, Valve took that fucked up funky little little Don Knotts looking security dude and with a wave of Beyonce's partner let me upgrade you wand, they really had the goddamn nerve, the fucking gargantuan diamond studded balls to occasionally return him to us like this within the first 10 minutes of gameplay! And instead of rightfully crying, Gabe Newell, I have never seen this man before in my life, we really were just like, oh, of course, yes, who wouldn't recognize Barney Calhoun? Magical. Witchcraft. Terrifying power. No other studio could have brought us along like this. To this very goddamn day, I don't know how Gabe did it, and I tremble in the wake of his eldritch magics.